Hello, my name is Kevin Namink and I'm a developer at SVI. In this webinar about analysis pipelines and batch processing, I will tell you about our various options for automation of large processing tasks. The idea is to show what is possible with the various options and to compare their advantages and disadvantages. The goal is to help you make an informed decision on which solutions are most suitable for you. First, I'll show the workflow processor, one of our batch processing tools in Huygens the other one being the Batch Express. Then I will show the Huygens Remote Manager, or HRM, a web-based interface for using Huygens. Lastly, I'll show the new Huygens command line interface, a way to include the processing options from Huygens more easily in your own scripts and workflows. This is the workflow processor window. The workflow processor is the tool in Huygens Pro in Essential and Localizer that allows for automization of a lot of processing. In the top we have a row of icons for editing the workflow and changing GPU and concurrency settings. Below that is an area for showing the workflows, and below that is an information area, and on the right is an area for previews. An advantage of the workflow processor is that getting started with it is easy. You just install Huygens, and if you have a license you can start it. To use the workflow processor you usually run Huygens on your own computer, which might not be ideal if you often work from a laptop, or you have, you have very large data sets. Let's create a workflow by clicking the Add Workflow button in the Workflow Designer and open the Workflow Designer. In the Workflow Designer we can create workflows for the Workflow Processor. Uh, in the Workflow Designer we see two rows of icons that represent the various tasks you can process your image with with the Workflow Processor. Below that is an editor for the currently selected task and to the left of that is a to-do list with what you have to do before this workflow can be sent to the workflow processor. In the top left we can load and save the currently uh, created workflow. To add tasks to the workflow we can drag the icons from the top to the bottom row and it will snap to when in the workflow it makes most sense to add that task. So if I, for example, click the autocrop task, we open the autocrop editor, and if I then uh, drag and drop this task from the top to the bottom row, it will snap to its most logical location in the workflow. The workflow processor has the most options for processing compared to the other batch processing methods I will show today. The only missing method is the co-localization task, but we want to add that soon. A nice feature in the workflow processor is that it uses a lot of templates. You can save templates to document the exact processing done and then reuse them for repeating the experiments and you can even use it in some other tools. While processing it will always save the exact workflow template with the results. For this example I have already created a template that I will now quickly load. Uh, this workflow uh, s uh, processes an uh, image with a confocal and stat channel that need to be deconvolved and they have a bit of chromatic uh, aberration so it corrects the ab chromatic aberration as well. Some newer features I want to highlight in the workflow pro designer before uh, sending this task are the new deconvolution algorithm called Au automatic which will automatically uh, decide on which uh, deconvolution algorithm and settings are best in the same way the deconvolution express works. In this case I will go back to the CMLE. Uh, another new feature is the uh, stitch task for the workflow processor. You can uh, now stitch in batch and the analyze objects task. I will now send the uh, task I have created to the workflow processor by clicking send and close. And we now see the workflow processor window with this new task ready to run. If we click the run button, the workflow processor will execute the workflows. And while running, we can see exactly what is being processed via the previews and the changing statuses in the workflow overview. It has now finished the first channel and now the second channel which quickly updated the preview of the result. And now the status is also gone to finished after it finished. 
This task only took a short time, but even in this case, using the workflow processor, we didn't have to open the various specific tools in Huygens to do this processing. For very large files that take longer to process, or for many files that all need to process, the advantages of a batch processing uh, workflow become even larger. Some specific situations when the workflow processor might be a good choice is if there are a few users that will use it often. If your data is rather large and there is a machine that can handle it and that is available enough for all users. And if you want to make the most of your processing, if there are the most possible options and the most methods to edit them, so the final result could be potentially the most optimal using the workflow processor compared to the other image processing routes I will show today. Now I will talk about the HRM or Huygens Remote Manager. The HRM is a web-based interface to use Huygens. You send the images and a set of, set of instructions to the server machine and it will do the processing. You'll get an email when it is done and you can then download the result image. To use the HRM your facility needs to run an HRM server. This requires setting up a local website and it will also require a license to Huygens Core. Setting up such a server can be challenging, especially if you're not familiar with hosting a website. We offer some support, but it is advised to have some experience yourself. For the users, it will however be very easy to access the HRM, as they can simply go to the website you are hosting and log in. On the HRM website, you first have to upload the images you want to process. Do so under the raw images option. This can take some time if you have very large files but you can use Omero to transfer the files as well. This is currently only possible in the HRM. To create a job, we go to the Launch Jobs option. Then we can select the image we want to process. In this case, this image. Then we select the image template. This can be supplied by an administrator to make this less complex for the user. Uh, but in this case, uh, I have used the extract from image template action to extract the uh, image metadata from the image I uploaded. That is this template. Then next we select the restoration template. These can also be supplied by the administrator and in this case the uh, administrator supplied CMLE very low SNR reasonably suitable for deconvolving. In this restoration template there are a lot of tasks that we have seen in the workflow processor that are also available but not all of them. Next we can select an analysis template. Um, this image is a single channel image so a co-localization analysis is not possible but uh, this task is currently only available in the HRM. Lastly, we can uh, review the job before sending it to the server. After sending it, it will be in the queue and it will automatically start and uh, finish. Uh, when it finishes, it will send you an email. It could happen that uh, when there are a lot of users, that this queue becomes quite long, but uh, it will just continue 24 7 if necessary and you can just wait for the email. After a job finishes, you can uh, inspect the result in the, uh, under the result option and then you can download it. So some situations when the HRM might be the best choice is if there are a lot of different casual users or if the data is rather large and or there is a lot of it, then the HRM can work 24 seven if necessary. Note that these situations I describe here before and later do not cover all possible situations, of course. And lastly about the HRM, some uh, of the latest addition that you might not have seen yet if you uh, were aware of the HRM already, is that it now has uh, PHP 8.1 support. So the um, PHP 7 that used to be required uh, but was no longer re receiving security support can be dropped 
and the definitions of stopping criteria can now be chosen for each channel separately. Lastly, the Huygens command line interface. This is a new feature. To use the Huygens command line interface, you need to do some coding. So the only way to use it is by running code that you have written yourself. In the situations this might be a good option, you will probably already be used to writing code, as especially in the situations that when you have already automated other processing steps, it might be a very nice addition. Simply put, the command line interface is a way to call Huygens from your own code. This way you can potentially fully automate the deconvolution in your image processing. Uh, what the command line interface effectively does is that it takes a batch template that you have made in the workflow processor in Huygens Pro or Essential and it runs that template with the subject image and destination easily replaced. With the command line interface it is easy to scale up and automate more of your processing when for example you have your own Python scripts for processing your data or when using a workflow managing software package. When using a big workload managing software package to set up a high throughput system, you can use the command line interface from Huygens to write the deconvolution steps and offer them via that package. For example, some of these packages are Slurm and Orchestra, but there are many more and it might be even the case that you have effectively made your own. In a way you can call the HRM a workload managing software package that exclusively does tasks with Huygens. Offering deconvolution in these managers can help with a few things. First, the deconvolution takes a lot of processing sometimes, and if it can be automatically distributed to multiple nodes, it will finish faster than on one dedicated machine. Secondly, it is more easy to run deconvolution or any other Huygens process when it is available in the same place as much of the other processing. Then another situation when the Huygens command line interface might be a great addition is when for a particular setup some of the processing steps are already automated. For example, you might have already written code to automatically transfer images from the microscope to a database or you produce hundreds of wells of data that you automatically analyze with your own analysis. You can then include the deconvolution steps with Huygens or other Huygens processing steps in an automated process during the command line interface, using the command line interface during these steps. This will save you the time to do so manually. I will now run uh, it, the command line interface with the translation of the um, Python file you are seeing right now. I have translated it to a uh, Windows batch script and um, it will do more or less the same. Um, it, will, uh, it has the uh, Huygens score path defined, the template path defined and the image open and result there um, is defined where you can easily run it again with uh, one of these definitions changed to a different uh, option to uh, change what is uh, actually processed and uh, this can be easily scaled up to whatever you need. So uh, it now started running in a new window and you see all the output uh, that Huygens returns uh, that you could also uh, check in your uh, scripting uh, for strange things uh, but it will generally return uh, that it uh, was successful or not. In this case it was successfully processed and we can close this window. Uh, some potential advantages of implementing the command line interface in an automated workflow like this is that Huygens can uh, correct the metadata of an image or correct the dimensions and it can read and save in a lot of form formats. So even without deconvolution it might be a very good first step. Also automatically using deconvolution on data that would otherwise be too much work to do it for any every time should improve the reliability of the results. So what have I shown you today? Here's a short summary. Uh, the workflow processor is easy to get started with, but your computer has to be powerful enough to uh, work with the data you are uh, using. Then um, the HRM is easy for um, as a multi-user solution because it's via the web browser and it has an Omero connection. 
uh, what is a downside is that it doesn't have all the possible uh, processing options and it requires running a, running a website which can be a little bit tricky. Then the command line interface, this offers the most automated experience when it is set up and it can be used with job management softwares like Slurm but it does require doing some progressing, programming yourself and it is uh, maybe the most difficult to set up. Then uh, I want to thank you for watching and uh, I uh, hope this is helpful.